to that sort of basic presentation of the uh, report. You should have a copy. If you don't, please come up and we'll make sure you have a copy of both Elwood and New Wilmington. And what we did is we sort of pre-formatted some questions. I should not say I pre-formatted some questions for them to think about. If you have some additional questions, all please hold them to the end and we're going to give opportunity for you to ask some things that might be thought starters based on what they say. All right. So when you look at the purpose of the project, one of the things we did was set it out in an outline that got them to think about, you know, what are we going to do, how are we going to do it, and then what are the results? So one of those questions was, what is the underlying purpose that was really guiding how you put your community development survey together? So with that in mind, yeah, I mean, we, we threw out some different ideas of, of things to focus on, but we ultimately as a group decided to focus on the community development portion just because of how much it encompasses between, you know, what's our access to health and safety, different justice, or just opportunities for improvement. And then, you know, as all of us know, COVID's affected our communities pretty strongly. So we thought it was a good time to, to tap in and see what you know, Elwood Business's current status was, maybe some desires that they were hoping that the Chamber could provide to them, and then ultimately, you know, get that feedback and provide it to the Chamber so they also understand how can they plug back in and, and help those different businesses succeed, really. So, j just from your, sort of a follow-up on that, did you feel things went pretty well on, you know, developing the uh, survey and sending it out and getting feedback on it? Yeah, I thought that, you know, this was where it was nice with the leadership class because even though we didn't work directly with the New Wilmington team, we kind of, you know, shared some different ideas of, of what questions to ask, especially when you're, I know we'll probably get into it later, but when you're thinking of like opinion-based questions and data-based questions because you kind of need a mixture of both to really do a solid SWOT analysis. But I thought the development all in all went pretty well. Sounds great. All right, next question, please. How would you best summarize community of Elwood City based on, you know, I'll call it first blush. Uh, when data starts to come in, people start to read it, look at it, and I, and I think we all start to, when we do that, form some initial, what do we call what, that first first idea of what this is about, what the community seems to be. And so, how would you best summarize, do you think, what Elwood's like based on some of the survey responses? There's, you know, I'm from New Wilmington, so I, I got to admit, I don't really know a lot about Elwood. I mean, I know I work with Elwood Group, but I always just kind of go visit Elwood City Forge, and that's about it. So, you know, looking at the, the results first glance, there's definitely a lot of longevity. I would say within the Elwood community, man, one business was there since 1889. So there's definitely some longevity there. Most of them were rated as small businesses, kind of se sectioned into the public education, also different professional services and retail so that, that was kind of what you were seeing small business wise but then the other side of it too beyond just the business itself is they all have a pretty big willingness to participate and learn so i think there's some energy to tap in on there and also to help offer some different things as far as workshop goes because it seems like they want to learn more about the networking opportunities and and just how to better their business sounds good thank you very much okay as we move on to the next slide what we did now is we took a look at it more of the, uh, what I'll call the analytical part. And the purpose of the project sort of laid that initial foundation. But once the data starts to come in and you look at what's important from the standpoint of how this data is processed, how the survey was put together, and you start to think about leadership is important when you work as a team to, to analyze things. I think it can be one of the most difficult things to do. So when your team formatted the survey, Bobby talked about trying to get both a historical as well as a, an opinion-based perspective. Tell us a little bit about that. So uh, we decided to develop questions that were historical and opinion-based to get just a variety of feedback to really understand the longevity of the businesses, how many years have they been um, in, if they've been established, what are their main products, what are their main services. We wanted to know, are the businesses current members of the Chamber of Commerce? We wanted to know all of those things as well as what were their, what are their thoughts, what are their opinions on the businesses that they have established and um, the location of the businesses in Elwood City, how are, you know, how satisfied are they? 
with the location and how they conduct business. What's their quality of life? What are the safety services? What are the greatest strengths? We wanted to know, you know, their thoughts um, subjectively so that we could have a, just kind of a balanced view of the information that we received back from the survey. So it just gave us a just kind of a wide array of information and feedback. As you do look at both surveys for New Wilmington and Elwood, the handout does have the graphics in there, the responses, the percentages, and we'll get into those a little bit more when we get to the SWOT analysis. But we wanted to give you at least a copy of the, the raw data so you'd have that as we answer questions today. Okay, moving on. When you look at the surveys and how they were distributed in the response rate, could you speak to that a little bit? Yes. We developed the survey through um, Google Forms, the platform Google Forms, which is an online platform that allows us to create the survey and then have participants, we collaborate with the, the participants, the respondents, just kind of in real time. We had an email list generated by Dale Thompson, who is the executive director of the Elwood City Chamber of Commerce. And that's who we distributed the surveys to. We, you know, we've done some research on surveys and there's obviously a variety of ways you can send out surveys. You can we send them in person, through email, through mail, telephone, and through apps. We chose this platform because it was convenient and, again, kind of in real time, and we could generate reports from this particular app. That was, you know, pretty, they were pretty clear about reports. The responses that we received were approximately 18% out of the email list that we had submitted the surveys to. And in our research, response rates in the 5 to 30% rate range are pretty typical. So our 18% was pretty average in receiving responses. So we feel pretty, pretty validated and accurate in where we're at with the respondents and the information that we, that we got back. Thanks, Suzanne. Yeah, one of the things that, if you've ever been involved in a survey, they, they can be challenging, right? And the larger the sample, obviously, one would think that those would be the, you know, get the best results. And it may or may not be true. But again, that average range of between 5% on the low side to an average of 30% on the higher side is fairly typical, especially for surveys. They got to use the technology of an online survey they also got to interact relationally and communication-wise with Dale at the Chamber. And so with that, we built, I think, a pretty robust opportunity to get information, categorize it, and take a look at it. So as you look at that now and we move on, one of the things that I explained is that we, as they got information in, they began to take a look at a SWOT analysis. And if you look at the format and technology, that really builds the opportunity to do the SWOT as the data comes in. So I think uh, Roger will address this. What were Elwood's greatest strengths? Again, this data that they share with you is primarily the respondent data versus personal opinion that we'll get to do more towards when we get to the end, okay? But uh, Roger, what do you see as the greatest strengths coming back from the survey info? The respondents from Elwood City reported that the greatest strengths are from Feel an improved quality of life, a sense of community strength, they uh, feel safe, uh, their businesses are close to their homes, uh, they have accessibility to their target market audience. So that was the initial yeah. one of their strengths. Um, one of the nice things, having done some business personally in Elwood City and got to know, you know, not an abundance of people, but let's say a car, core group of people especially that have been involved with the chamber and some prominent businesses. I think what Roger said pretty much hits it right on target, right? It's, it's a smaller town and community, but as they got a big heart, right? And with that in mind, there's a sense of family, I believe, and a sense of camaraderie within the community. So as we look at the next thing, one of the strengths, and I think Roger will share that with you, is when you look at what some of the data that came in and the, the high percentage, it says, Based on the data, 81% of respondents rated Elwood as a positive place to conduct business, too. And they spoke a little bit to that as respondents. What, what did you see there, Roger? Based on the data, the respondents in this group and uh, from Elwood City, uh, the respondents said that it was a safe place, provides a higher quality of life, 
on a reasonable cost of doing business. They also felt highly satisfied with the city's proximity to the highways, ability for, to, to transport goods and resources. They felt it was a reliable uh, place to do real estate investments and building opportunities. Uh, the respondents see the city as a strong, viable, like I said earlier, close to their homes, and they do have a sense of safety in the community. Yeah, you know, you, you, you hear those data points, and then all of a sudden you, you can really see how 81% starts to really become a strong number for, for Elwood City. So I could just say from a personal standpoint, you know, the accuracy on the responses coming back in my personal experience has been, has, has been really right along those lines. So let's move on. Other category, which Bobby had mentioned earlier, different variety of responses there, which to us wasn't surprising based on, you know, just small businesses struggle with different challenges in communities. So we weren't surprised there that the 43% was in the other category, but 21% parking and 14% was market saturation. So, you know, we feel that that's a, this is a good opportunity for the chamber to uh, reach out to the respondents and get some more concise information in regards to what they feel are the challenges so that they can better understand that and, and try to improve in those areas. Thank you. One thing I'd like to explain, and I, it's probably evident in what she said, but when the uh, teams developed the questions and, and put them under the Google format, we gave plenty of opportunity for respondents to click another category and then put in their own words. And, and so with that, it does open the gate, so to speak, for individual opinions. But as she said, I think that becomes a great opportunity for people then to in the chamber to look at some of those individual responses and then drill down a little bit in follow-up to say, you know, what's this really mean if, if it's market saturation or if it's parking? And what does that mean more on an individual local level based on where their store is and where the businesses are? So thank you very much. When it comes to weaknesses, again, and again, we have a tendency sometimes to think as weaknesses as obstacles that we have to overcome. What are the primary obstacles that we heard from customers, businesses, from the chamber perspective? So they talked about few, few community events, difficulty attracting new businesses, and lack of community support as some of their obstacles. The most frequent response was related to hiring and retaining employees, and that was at 50%. So, you know, we look at COVID, of course, the pandemic, and again, we're not surprised just based on the, the impact that COVID had on businesses that those were some of the respondents' feedback terms of employees and retention and things like that. And again, this is relative to small businesses, you know, across the nation. These are very common types of obstacles that small businesses face. So again, we weren't surprised. Thank you. Bobby, I sound like you may want to No, I was just going to add to what she yeah. said. It was interesting because that, that was an obstacle, but then, you know, when you look at the charts, None of them really had a change in the employee count, but I think they were kind of, they must have been anticipating it a little bit more because, I mean, there's just all the 25% there that they're worried there's going to be a decrease too. So. Yeah. yeah, I think it's, a, it's obviously sort of systemic when you have major events going on in, in really the world in our local communities that starts to color how we see things too, right? Then at the personal level, I think it was validated a little bit more in that if you're a business and you only lose one key employee, right? Might not be a huge number, but it's, it can have a huge impact on your on your team and on your business. So thank you. thanks a lot. All right, moving on. The thing we all like, right? Where are the opportunities? A little preface here. One thing about opportunities, they often show up initially as either some threats or some weaknesses. But how we deal with those, how we position them, what we do from a what leadership perspective determines how we can overcome and move on. So, from the standpoint of opportunities, what opportunities did we see coming back from the respondents concerning this a little more forward-looking versus picture of today? Roger? Elwood City is positioned to assist the local community with a host of resources. However, the respondents identified additional opportunities that they would like to see in the future, such as increased access to residential development, more supportive workforce recruitment and retention effort, expanded advertising and marketing capabilities, and a reevaluation of zoning and uh, permitting process. Yeah, yeah and if you look at those, you're saying, it depends which side of your equation are on, right? They can be challenges. Unaddressed, they can even develop into, into some threats. But when you look at it from a standpoint of 
let's say the local chamber, the governmental perspective, in the community, they start to say, hey, here are some opportunities that we see some folks struggling with, and how can we improve that? Because as we improve the community, improve the business opportunities and the growth, really those become opportunities. So the next one then, based on the survey, what are the top three business workshop topics? And before Roger shares those with us, one of the things that I saw that the Chamber does really well, just going up onto their website, was that they already offer really a real array of business workshops, support services. So when we asked the community, we said, what would you like to see? Again, it's trying to get that individual perspective of how can we take it from a large menu of solutions down to maybe a little more targeted for, for Dale and his team to work with. So what do we see there? Based on the survey, the top three business workshop topics that are requested by the respondents were social media, retirement planning, and marketing strategies. Again, the, the cool thing was looking at their website, did, did you see some things that they currently do? Yeah, well, what we found out was, was the, the, based on review of the Chamber's website, found out that they do offer economic development, community development, human resource development, public relations resources. So it is beneficial to continue to offer a low cost, no, no cost workshops and educational opportunities to help businesses thrive and grow in our city. Mm -hmm. Expanding the opportunity to include requesting workshops will help meet the express needs of training and development, effectively communication and bringing awareness will bring the opportunities yeah. to tie the two together. Like most communities, Elwood has a great website, and Roger just shared what we sort of call the, you know, what are the big bucket categories that they do training, development, provide services in. And so if you have an opportunity and you're interested to follow it up, go to their website. And then underneath that, you're going to see sort of a breakdown of individual events, courses, workshops that and services that you can they can follow up with. So it sounds like we're on track. Now the last one, if you look at SWOT analysis, strengths, weakness, opportunities, and the, the dreaded threats. So how about some threats that we saw coming back from the data? I mean, Suzanne already kind of touched on this, but the recruiting and retaining seemed to be one that was definitely an area of concern. And the 25% anticipating it's going to be bad. I mean, if you look at you know, the report, 50% of businesses have zero to five employees. So not being able to retain employees in that you know, ballpark, that would be a huge hit, kind of what you had alluded to earlier. So I think there's there's something to be said there, and I think that's where you kind of go back to the website or communication on the HR techniques that they they offer within the chamber. And knowing you're an HR person. Well, um, I, I just <laughs> agree in it. I don't do HR. <laughs> <laughs> No, you just, oh, well, you're classified as a fireman. Yeah, so, yeah, that's exactly it. Yeah, right. <laughs> I think, again, you start to look back at where we are with just life in general and economy and the workforce now. It wasn't surprising that we saw this come up in the, in the report. So it sort of validates, in, in a way, what we already know. But again, sliding back, and we don't have to. It, it gives, gives the chamber an opportunity to say, how can we really mitigate some of the challenges the communities experience it as a threat. They didn't ask for this, they can't control it, but what do we do now, right? Opportunity to work together. So I know also there were some questions and responses in there. What government tools, resources, and some of the actions do you think the Chamber could support with that the respondents talked about? Well, Roger already touched up on this as far as the business workshops, so you know, social media, marketing strategies, retirement planning. On the other side of it too, and, and Roger kind of touched with this with Zoning, I think you mentioned something about permitting too, but people need help, you know, understanding how do we obtain grants in the first place? How do we advertise better? And beyond that, with the permitting stuff, how do we incentivize people to shop local more? And, and how do we do more public outreach in a time where we're being kind of guided to be very isolated? It's hard to kind of understand exactly how to do it, but one of those areas, I think the chamber, if they had some sort of workshop or something, they could probably do a pretty good brainstorming situation and, and feel out what the businesses really need or want more than just what the survey kind of alluded to but they're definitely interested in that because I think there is that little concern of you know what's how long does the pandemic last and are we going to be first to close or downsize or even relocate depending on different different Elwood City requirements yeah I think based on the, the business sector you're in you know impacts that retail market I think especially strongly right any other uh, comments on SWAT from 
our team here. Conclusions and recommendations, and you guys are so good, you're right on time. Whoa. <laughs> so, uh, what'd you come up with? Uh, you know, we, we looked at, as a team, when we thought the top three kind of things we would recommend, and, and one of them was, I, there's somehow we got to bring together and publicize the small businesses in Elwood, so whether they do some sort of, I don't know, kind of some sort of campaign where either small or shop local, right, or small shop Saturday or something centered around that to publicize those small businesses that are in the retail sector and you would see in some of the comments you know one was even you know for the businesses there's businesses that aren't on Main Street and they kind of get forgotten so how do we pull them in too and, and guide people in the direction to go and visit those different shops there's definitely an interest in bringing the community back together through different community events so I think that's one way you can kind of it could even be combined with that with shop local with something else you know the other thing is the workshops. We've already kind of talked about that, but the social media, the retirement planning, and the marketing strategies. People have an interest in there, and, and the website's right there, but, you know, I think sometimes we all forget about the one and looking at the website. To be honest, I was one of those people before this class where I didn't really understand what Chamber of Commerce always did. So I think some of that's just even word of mouth and getting that out there, that the Chamber's there to provide help, and, and here's the tools that they offer. And then finally, I think there's some, whether it's a workshop or training or, or what, I think there's some opportunity in understanding how do you obtain grants, how do you start a small business in the first place if you're interested in it, and then the zoning and the permits too, and, and just help with that attraction of the new business and, and maybe not make it such an overwhelming thought or idea. Be as succinct on this next group. I think they're good. I don't know, they're a little talky. We might have to. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Round two is uh, the Wilmington Chamber. Okay, off to the adventure. Formatting for this group, all the industry is similar. Questions are, are different because survey responses are different. And so there's a bit of a twist on their presentation versus uh, the previous Elwood group. Let's dig into the purpose. One of the things that we looked at was you know, what was the goals of them from a development standpoint for the New Wilmington survey. And obviously the reasons why, if you, if you know much about New Wilmington and Newcastle and Elwood, which you probably all do, they've all got their unique flavor of culture as well as businesses. So would you speak to that from a goal standpoint, um, how you sort of attack that survey? Yeah, so what we wanted to do was work with the chamber to look out at some of the businesses that were from members and non-members of the organization and get what their opinions were of Wilmington in the area. And we wanted to see, you know, kind of what their current business climate was and overall what their opinion of the chamber was. And then we wanted to take those results back to the chamber uh, with suggestions. From a goal standpoint, how did, well do you think that was sort of fulfilled with the, what was coming back to it? As a, overall, I think we had a really good return like we said in the prior presentation, surveys don't usually have a high percentage, but I think we had 47 respond, which is a real great number. Okay. Uh, so it, it gives us a real wide range of information to get back to the chamber. So as we, as we take a look at the second portion of this particular issue with purpose of the project, when you look at it from responses, did you get also a, a general flavor of what the business climate would be at this time in the moment? We did. Right now, you know, it appears to be a lot of small businesses, family-owned businesses, and for the most part, good relationships between the businesses. Like everybody in the county, they're dealing with COVID. Wilmington's a big tourist uh, with the Amish community, with their lamp being right next door. So without the travel this year, it's a community that's kind of missing that revenue stream. And that's something that, you know, as a community, they're trying to figure out what's the best way to proceed into the future to get that back. I know originally, having worked closely with the group, we thought about could we fold in that northern area with the, with the lamp of Pulaski and the Wilmington, and we ended up uh, sort of focusing more on probably, though we wanted to capture that school district, I think especially with COVID it was more and more difficult because people's lives are just you know so busy. Do you think the majority of responses came back from I'll call it at least the borough or business proper around that area? Yeah, majority of the responses did come back within the borough and those local businesses. Sounds good. All right, when you think about methodology, who's going to share with us really how you put that together with the New Wilmington Chamber? Uh, well, we also used Google Forms. Highly recommend. It's free as opposed to some of the other ones. But it does give you the nice, pretty charts and graphs. So 
Yeah, we also we also use Google Forms. The questions themselves were developed by the chamber. They gave them to us. We put them into Google Forms. Did some minor editing, but they they let us know exactly what they were looking for. Like they they had it in mind what information they wanted from their community. So that was very helpful for them, and we were able to give them what they needed. So the final response. We did have 85 surveys went out, 48 came back, so it was a 56% response rate. But I credit that to the involvement of the chamber board members who, specifically John, went door to door and <laughs> encouraged their fellow business owners to participate in this survey. So we did get a, a very good response rate, which I think will allow us to give some good feedback to the chamber. Thanks. I'm moving on. The survey I know, as you've shared, as being a part of the board and chamber in New Wilmington, we did get some feedback on you know what's going on in the Amish community. What did you find there? Yeah, so we debated, you know, the chamber debated, we talked about it, if and how we would include Amish-owned businesses in this survey. And I think after some discussion, we felt that this that was a bigger project than something that we were going to be able to do at this time. Specifically because of the lack of technology available to them, they weren't going to be able to complete a Google form. And so we, it would require going door to door, which would require somebody that had the trust of that community, an insider. So we didn't have time to build that champion and build that relationship to, to really facilitate that in a meaningful way. So we felt like we would stick to the English-owned businesses, the Amish can come at maybe a later time they can take this survey and, and do that for the Amish-owned businesses. Also, I think that their needs would be a lot, would be just slightly different than, than the other communities, so it might not have gotten the same results. You know, I, I can share from being on the other side of that fence that one of the things that this team did is they asked for survey questions. It, made the chamber themselves start to look at, you know, wow, we've got a whole community of businesses that are sometimes not as visible, but equally important, and how do we reach them? And again, it's not the one size fits all, right? It's really community that has a different culture, and that culture is really built on relationship and trust. So what they've done is really forced us as a chamber to say, how will we gain that trust? How will we build that and strengthen that relationship more? And so that's something with them taking that back that is an important component moving forward. So we appreciate that. Okay, moving on. SWOT analysis, right? Strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. When you look from a standpoint of community strengths, what did you see as the top three strengths? According to the survey, top three three strengths would be 62% of the businesses are already long-term in their stable companies. So with the response that we received in that, that's a pretty high amount, 62%. And they also recognize that the Amish is a very important part of their community and that they, they need their say too. So that was, I believe, a strength as well, understanding that you, you still have respondents out there that you would need. And as for the chamber, most of the people that responded, the businesses that responded, they prefer email as their type of communication between the community. So the chamber already kind of does that. That's what they do. Their primary communication is through email. And with that being a preferred method, that's going to make it easier for the Chamber of Commerce to really get into the community and let people know what they do. Good. And we're looking at that Amish community that obviously doesn't use that technology. We're going to have to rethink, based on their feedback and, and the respondents, of how do we how do we embrace that? And it's going to be an adventure to say the least. All right. From another strength standpoint, I mentioned earlier that we originally thought about what's going on at the land. Lasky and then with the woman to be in the center. While we didn't really focus outside, let's say that sort of that core area of uh, the borough and, and, uh, and a little beyond, again, takes in two counties, right? Because you, your Mercer right on the end of the borough on the north side, south side is, is Lawrence. So you get that variation also. But we did ask a question and we've got some feedback on how do people feel about the, you know, the interaction relationships between the communities? What, what did we find out? It was actually an, an amazing amount. 82% of the survey takers, they really believe in their community and their businesses. They believe they're friendly, they 
and respect and they know each other. So I think that there's already a level of trust between most of the businesses. 82% is amazing. It's pretty awesome. Yeah. Obviously, smaller community, right? So uh, you get to build some of those relationships. Yes. Any just any just personal thoughts on why you think this like that the number was maybe a little high or not? I you know I I know I frequently we call them Cooper Days. My last name is Cooper. We call them Cooper Days, and we do a lot of things. We go to Wilmington. We go to like in Wilmington. I really think it a lot of it too is the sense there. Like there is a sense of community already there. You know I was already saying that about. They have special days constantly. I mean, it, it is all about community when you go into the New Wellington area. So there already is, like, just camaraderie. And, and it's just, it actually is a sense when you walk in there, you already feel like you're welcomed. You know, that's how I, that's why I would think so. I mean, there's, it's just so overwhelming, like, a sense of peace. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and even though we do sort of have that east-west central <coughs> entities of, of some of the smaller towns probably one of the things that ties that together is the school district right because Wilmington goes to pretty much to Butler County on one end and Slippery Rock and then clear over to the Ohio line so very good thank you when you take a look at some of the things that community will struggle with what weaknesses do you think the chamber could begin to work on based on the you know the responses the biggest thing the chamber needs to work on if you look at page seven of our report we asked What's your understanding of the chamber and what they do? And almost two thirds of the respondents either had a negative opinion or weren't familiar with the organization as a whole. Fourteen percent, or fourteen point six, said they didn't even know Wilmington had a chamber. So you know that's a huge weakness. If your community doesn't know you exist. It's going to be hard to serve them. Or if they don't know exactly what you do, they don't know what you have to offer. So we saw that as probably the biggest weakness. And then the other thing is, we asked them what features would you like to see on the Chamber's website. And when looking at the Chamber's website, you can go to Live, Live New Wilmington and find it you know, through, through that site, but the Chamber itself doesn't have a standalone site. So it's you know, hard to find that one site. And then the thing that our people that we surveyed wanted was you know, opportunities to advertise for their companies, local community news, membership director, a Chamber newsletter, links to other business resources. That stuff right now is not available on that website, which is a weakness, but also an opportunity. Yeah, again, one of the, not for those that don't know much about the Wilmington, from a organizational perspective, the, the chamber really is all volunteer. So sometimes that reflects a little bit on the, on the I think the data that you heard. And so it does become a, a huge opportunity for them to, to look at potential members, communicating to existing members and then say, how could we turn this so-called weakness? Because remember, based on a SWOT analysis, where's the control on this? So internal, right? So it's an internal organizational weakness that handled the property, we can turn it into a, a strength because it is an opportunity. So with that in mind, let's move on, okay? Community weaknesses. Based on the survey, what weakness could the chamber address to improve communication on the membership? So we talked about that a little, right? And Jack yep. mentioned that one of the biggest ones would be website, website, technology, and communication, right? Number two, what's the primary business obstacles do did participants share based on uh, the Wilmington now and in the future? Well, and a lot of this, you know, I feel coming back from it is the impact of COVID that we're seeing. You know, a lot of the people surveyed said slow economy, impact of COVID, and the biggest thing is lack of customers. And that's all kind of related with what a lot of communities are going through right now with COVID. But the biggest thing, too, is attracting new customers. That's what the community is most concerned about, getting that foot traffic in the, back in their uh, stores and into their businesses. Because with COVID, the tourism's been down, but the colleges have <coughs> less movement on their campuses. So they need that local foot traffic, and they need the chamber to help get that foot traffic back into Wilmington. Yeah, and, and like many communities their size and larger even, you look at these downtown quarters and it really does become what's Main Street look like, right? So one of the challenges they'll have to do is how do we in the future try to fill storefronts? And then you add in a town that size where a lot of the potential foot traffic will probably be built around 
the opportunity to, we call it, showcase the Amish, you know, in the right way that's respective. Bring them in as a, a, as a partner more into the community from the feedback that the panel has given us. So let's stop, turn to opportunities. Strengths, weaknesses, now opportunities. What were the opportunities that you saw come back uh, that people are most optimistic about? Well, what the survey showed was there are lots of needs for business services, training, education that the chamber could provide, but is not currently doing. So that's one of the things that the chamber could focus on as their biggest opportunity, is to provide the services that the businesses are looking for. One of the questions was specifically about business expo and learning train, leadership training, which I believe they had done something similar in the past that had gone away, and now they're looking to possibly bring it back. I would say do that. 75% of people said they would yes or maybe they would go to one to a business expo. So that's a great opportunity for them to bring back that sort of an event to the community. So really, the the biggest opportunities are in what services the chamber could provide to their members and the local community. Very good. When you think of the next question, based on the survey. What do you think the top three business services are that the chamber could address, let's say, in the next 12 months? Okay, so this was one of the responses where people could then go in and add their own opinions. Like, you could check, check other, and then they could add in different things. So, but to summarize it, a lot of it fell under the same categories. Networking events, members want, community wants members to be able to get together and socialize and meet other Training and education was a big one, though it was listed on in multiple different ways. This is on page nine, if anybody wants to see. But they wanted help with social media. They wanted help with computer training. They wanted help with small business support, which I'm not exactly sure what that, the person that added that in, what they were looking for specifically with that. I guess it could be anything. Business training classes, the same way. So are they looking for accounting or marketing or you know what are what specifically are they looking for which is something that you could dive into further but there there is so networking training and exposure for their businesses is really what they're looking for so they want the chamber to help them advertise sounds like pretty full plate yes of opportunities right <laughs> thank you moving on last category in the swap let's take a look at the potential and least perceived threats right given the survey what prominent business issues to think in the Wilmington community space. So, like every other community, it is the COVID economy. Okay. New Wilmington really relies on that foot traffic, you know, um, for the businesses. And with COVID, what's shut down, what's, you know, people aren't vacationing like they were, and there's not a lot of movement as far as the economy goes. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, unfortunately, that's that seemed to be um, among yeah. the uh, survey takers. That was really the only threat that they felt was um, to their community and to their businesses. Yeah, and, I, and just building on what she says, I think when the, you're small like the Wilmington is, and probably one of those local icons that everybody recognized was the tavern, right? And so with the tavern not being open anymore, it creates a vacuum. And then you start to look at how that can reduce some foot traffic, right? Because Westminster is obviously a, a core part of our community. And when people come into celebrity series, they come into ball games, that was probably at least an establishment that. Uh, that's okay. huge. You know, looking and even with some of the retail places, you know, I know some of the restaurants and food vendors, you know, with government mandates. Who's going to walk around and you can't even go and sit and eat somewhere? So, yeah, it's definitely the tourism. They rely on it. But uh, really, as a result of everything that come back on the survey, what do you guys recommend? What do you think Wilmington could work on to uh, make it a better place for our community? Probably the easiest one, our recommendation, would be to improve the access of meetings um, and the current resources also. During, in the survey, 49% of the respondents either didn't know um, there was a chamber or they didn't know anything about the chamber. Businesses know that there is a chamber sure. <laughs> and that they do have resources and tools available to them. Another recommendation would be maybe rotating the time, the date to get some increase, 
you know, participation from the community. At the monthly meetings, yep. right? At yeah. The monthlies. Obviously, I think, remember the data, that was pretty well evenly skewed on sort of a morning, midday, which is what the current meetings are in, and then maybe something in the evening. So it's some pretty good advice. Next. So our next recommendation was increasing the services available to members um, and going off of their most preferred services that they wanted to see was networking and training. Combining those events into the third item that they wanted to do, which is more exposure for the businesses, we would recommend having the most, both the monthly meetings and quarterly trainings held at different venues, at different member businesses around the town, which would increase their exposure and allowing networking time before and or after the actual training. So that it's something you're, you're getting at all, all of their requests in one event, which would make it simpler to organize and more likely for people to come. If you just call it a networking event, some people don't necessarily want to stand around and make small talk. Some people don't aren't as good at at that they're intimidated but they might come to a training and that will lead into the networking naturally so that would be our recommendation as your first in way to increase service to your members sort of that consolidation and yeah leverage the interest and build yep that and build it all that. into one nice event okay great idea mr lynn yep and then the last two uh kind of go together but you know Developing a website that stands alone, not buried in another page that the individuals have to find, and that could get some of those services that the members wanted as far as the member directory, community page, as far as local news, news, upcoming meetings, hosting jobs. You know, right now we're in an economy where it's hard to find uh, applicants for a job. So if you can post that out there and get it out in the network, uh, that's extremely beneficial. And this would help with more people getting to know what the chamber does and get rid of one of those weaknesses. And then if you want to take that a step farther, look at establishing a social media presence. Right now, you know, everything we do in this world is based off of Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, some form of social media. So you put the information out there, you can advertise what you're doing, and you can look at even having your own YouTube channel. Uh, with people saying across the board, you know, I can't make a meeting in the morning, I can't make a meeting at night. You could live stream those onto a YouTube channel or Facebook Live, and you can save them. That way, if somebody cannot make a meeting in the morning, and if they wanted to, they can look at it later on when their time uh, works. So those were our last two suggestions, but they kind of go hand in hand. Sounds great. Well, I, as a member of the chamber, appreciate your uh, feedback and response I think there's a lot of opportunity there but you have to really sort of look inside for those internal things that we can make a difference on before we wrap up and you guys are right on also let's open it up for the floor if there's any general questions from the team that did such a great job on the moment other than the survey question did your respondents connect that the Amish community is important to the economic development of Wilmington did that come out in any open ends or did they connect that yeah, they did. There were mentions of the Amish community being a valuable part of the community. Okay. Yeah, just remember that question, I think, specifically, because obviously we were involved with it. I don't think, I think we just gave, took a, a cursory look at it to say, was it important? Yeah. Now we're trying to get a vibe on that they recognize that these are some contributing area. Wasn't another op other option where they could give a lot of comments? Now, they did have an opportunity at the end of the survey was an open box just any additional thing so I don't, it was mentioned in the open-ended was it yeah. Yeah. Open -ended comments. and question number seven on page eight we did ask them how important was the Amish community on a scale of one to five and 65 percent said five and that was extremely important yeah. yes sir so is the chain is the chamber going to conduct the analysis of the uh, Amish community to see where they fit in this side of this data set yeah i know internally i can address that is that that has come up as a, a strong opportunity within the chamber we talked about it extensively and have already developed sort of the initial format for the questions what we need to do now i think there are some key individuals and businesses within the Wilmington area that do business with the amish or have personal relationships 
For example, one is we talked to Susan Hugelman that does Simply Amish Tours. She's probably into about 24 of them that she has obviously very strong relationships with because she's taking people onto their property and, and also into their businesses and residents. So if we can probably tie into key individuals like Susan, and, and there, are, there are many of them, and then sort of filter that out more as a personal approach versus a, a cold survey because of just uh, the community itself, I think we'll uh, have a better opportunity to get feedback. But they have looked at it. There's been a, a draft of some preliminary questions. And, and if we can put together our, our next thought is to put together a core group of probably five to six people that could help us launch that. Great question. Anything else? I liked how you put the report together and after each question listed whether it was opportunity, strength, or just to kind of keep it real tight in there with what you thought specifically of each question. I thought it was a nice, re understand, like very understandable to take it all in. Very nice. Going once. Final questions? Going twice? Oh, is that Tom? Hey, can I uh, chime in real quick? Uh, is this Tom? Yes, this is Tom. Uh, this is Tom uh, Hart. We're not going to let you ask That's him. Good. <laughs> just kidding. Go ahead, buddy. This, I just want to say, uh, very interesting data. I really appreciate all the work you, you uh, put into that. And you know, a lot of things that uh, you know, we, we obviously have seen and have, are looking at and addressing moving forward. And uh, you know, as out of COVID and start being able to start having more foot traffic and things like that, you know, we, we hope to, to solve some of those problems. We've been addressing the, the Amish quite a bit differently in the past year or so. Uh, when we first started our chamber back in the early 90s, we made a conscious decision to not market them per se or market anything that's going on around them because back then they were very much more private. And, but more recently, they have really opened up their doors and their businesses to much more uh, to more of the English. And so they have a keen interest in being, you know, have more marketing going on, you know, directly of their businesses and things like that. So we have been uh, working on a couple of projects to that end. And I think over the next couple of months, we'll see some things coming out that are pretty interesting in that, in that end. And I know, uh, John, I know you're probably biting your tongue trying to say some things about things we've been working on already, but we're not really ready to, to get into. But again, this is really good information, and I appreciate all the effort you folks did to do this. And I'm looking forward to getting the final print copies of your data. Okay, before we uh, hand it off, anything else, Melanie, that you'd like to do and Thank say? Thank you guys very much for the for the Okay, give them a hand, and uh, we'll be moving into our graduation ceremony. When it's not as crowded, you don't have the buses and stuff, not buses, the, the trucks and stuff like that. So I, uh, I usually sometimes do that. When I wake up from the hotel, it's like, you know what, I'm ready to get off. And I had this event this morning, and I, uh, I was very impressed with your presentation, um, what you're going on in the Wilmington area. I think it's very interesting because I was served on the tourism committee uh, for 16 years before I became a chairman. And the way things work, in Harrisburg, when you become a chairman, you have to give up uh, your other committee. So I always enjoyed tourism committee. I had a chance to tour the state and see some of the areas. And we talk about Amish and the Lancaster area. That's a big part of the community. And tourism dollars are so critical, even for Lawrence County, because I've always worked very closely with the Tourist Promotion Agency up here. And people don't realize when you're having a one-day event, like you did with the fireworks festival, how much money is generated in this community through the local restaurants and all the, the small businesses that can tap into that. So I'm happy to see what, what you're doing out in the Wilmington area. I think that's that's a great, uh, great, nice little community. I don't represent it at this time, but I've been out through from Westminster College and it's close. I have Pulaski and Shannon. And with reapportionment, I don't know where I'm going. <laughs> I have to pick up 5,000 people. So. That's a potential area. Yeah. So, and I would be happy to have it if they want to give it to me. I don't have the total control over that. But, you know, I tried. My district's fairly compact compared to some some members. I'm totally within Lawrence County, and I'm in my uh, 27th year. I'm actually one of the longest-serving members 
the legislature. I actually, with this term, put me in the history books for Lawrence County. Not in the longest serving in Lawrence County's history, but I'm far from it in Harrisburg. But I'm like number seven on the seniority list. And time has gone quickly when you look back. You know, I was elected in 1994, and you know, things have changed over the years. Some for the good, some for not the good. But I, I think we see a lot of positive things happening in our community here. And I see it, you know, working through the chamber, working with, uh, like I say, Tourist Promotion Agency, the Economic Development people. I try to work with, with other officials because, you know what, we have a nice community here. And I think sometimes when you look at things, you always get into the negative. We have so much positive here. Anybody who moves to Lawrence County from another area, they love it. Cost of living is low. You're close to Pittsburgh, you're close to Cleveland. You've got highway access. Um, you've got activity. You have a lot of activity in the community. So people say there's nothing to do. Uh, I can give them my schedule on the weekends under normal circumstances, <laughs> not the COVID's been up. Uh, but I'm saying they really appreciate it. And Jack, when you were talking about social media, there's a lot of positive, but you also have some negative about social media because some people, they thrive on the negativity and you get some of them together and you would think we're living in the worst place in the world mm -hmm. and, and that's unfortunate because i try to post I, I i look at social media i post positive stuff except maybe the COVID numbers which i have to, i do every day we've been doing that for like a year and a half so i post what the paper will have today because we get it from the department of health we just try to educate people you know i'm not putting anything out there but here's what the numbers are today now I, they have a debate every day now on my site <laughs> but that's comes with the territory what i'm saying i have you know my reach sometimes with social media isn't just lawrence county i have friends and people and groups that follow me around the state so my goal is whenever i post something i want them to see the positive in this community because there's people out there that say hey you know, lawrence county's not a bad place because we do, we have good stuff. Go to Combs Mill, isn't that beautiful out there? I mean, that's a draw. And when we look at the chamber, you try to put all this stuff together. And that is so important. We gotta give you, as a chamber, tools to attract. And that's where I think, you know, we try to work, work together. And like I said, sitting, listening to your presentation, I was impressed. I mean, you put a lot of effort into that, and that's good, because that's an area that I think we need to tap into. And I think it will get better once COVID's done, but you, it, you're 100% on target, foot traffic, getting <coughs> people out. But you know, with COVID, we're in a tough situation. I mean, I mean I'm mean, i fully vaccinated. I felt much better once I got it. I could come out, do this. I got my mask right here. <laughs> if you want me to wear it, I will wear it. Um, no, but I'm saying, but, it's, it's, I've never seen this, and I will say this in my 27 years in legislature. This is the first time we've had a crisis like this. Like we've had a few that we didn't all come together. In 2011, I'm sorry, 2001, I was in legislature, and that was the most tragic thing I think in many of our lifetimes. The next day, this country was all one. We all came together on that. I always remember that, and I'm like, you know, and I, I and I hope we can do that in the future because you don't, being divided is not a good thing. I chair Veteran Affairs and Emergency Preparedness. We're still a bipartisan committee. My counterpart on the Republican side, I talked to Karen, she's a great person. My former counterpart retired last term, Steve Barrar. Our staffs work together. If we can make a political issue about helping veterans and public safety, we got a problem. But my committee still does things the old fashioned way. We still do bipartisan dinners. I always, I always believe that if you can sit across the aisle from someone who may have some differences, you, the tone, it gets a little toned down a little bit more. Once you find out you have a family, and then we may disagree. Every district is different. I try to explain that. You try as, as a representative, you try to represent your district. Okay? I'm not always in tune with my party leadership. Just because I'm from Western PA, I'm more of a moderate conservative type Democrat, you know, from that perspective, but that's pretty much the makeup of my community. So you always, you know, you look at it in that standpoint, but I think sometimes we just need to tone down 
the politics stuff. And you know, we're at a point we need to turn it around. And I think you're seeing some positive things happen when you look and see, like in the community, what's happening. I mean, right now in Lawrence County, if you want a job, you can have a job. There's very few jobs paying minimum wage here. If you think about it, I mean, you have seen the ads. I mean, it's everywhere. I've not, I've not, I've not seen it like we're seeing it right. It's not just here. It's a lot of places. Uh, was it COVID? Was it the pent-up demand? They're trying to figure out how to get us through this. And I, I sympathize with many of our small businesses because they're hurting right now. And they're hurting because they can't get employees. A true story, I was at a local restaurant about two weeks ago. I always try to patronize the local restaurants. Because you know what? They're the ones that help the community. They're the ones where the Little League teams need something you go to. And But they hurt the most when, when you have a downturn. Uh, a young lady come, she waited on me. You know how old she was? 14. 14 years old. I, I was impressed. She's a Newcastle student. And she was, I, bet, I talked to the owner, I said, she's a nice young girl. And he said, but she's an honor student. And, but she did a good job. And I think that's, that's a good thing. But I'm saying is it's, you know, we need to get people back into the workforce. And hopefully, you know, if we're in a tough situation. And I do sympathize many with, especially in the restaurant and the service industry right now, because they're the backbone of the community. They're the ones, like I said, that help the local community, help things to move along and but uh, we've got a different type of workforce in Harrisburg I went to Wendy's yesterday morning I like their chicken uh, honey butter chicken biscuit and I go in the one lady must have been close to 80 and the other one about 75 in the window so I mean this is the new work you have senior citizens and you have younger children I don't say children kids okay um, and then you have the rest in between so but I just think that, you know, this is a great thing. Congratulations to each and every one of you that, that went through the program this year. I've been involved with this for a long time, but it was gone and it came back. And I'm glad, so glad to see the Chamber bring this back because it's so important. And I know that you may not have been able to get out in the community and do some of the stuff that you normally do. I mean, Zoom is nice, but you know what? Being there is actually better. I like being there. I guess I'm still on the old fashioned zone. Like I said, I never missed session. During the pandemic, I was there. Mark Longjetty from Sharon, he was there. Our us guys, we actually were there every day. I've never missed, so I, I wasn't gonna mess out, but I just, I, when you're sitting on the floor and you have debate, you can get into it. When you're watching it on a screen, it is just not the same. And a lot of times you reach over and you come, what do you think of this? Or you think this is, you know, it's, I don't know, it just, I still like it that way, and I know we're in a different world now. But I think an interesting concept, you're having a lot of saying, okay, we're just gonna keep everyone that can work from home. That's a problem, in a way, because you need that foot traffic. You were talking about foot traffic, right? Well, if everyone's working from home, they're no longer patronizing local restaurants, they're not out looking at shops, during the lunch hour, they're not doing some of those things that you normally do. Uh, so that could really have a, you know, a negative effect on you. And maybe that's something we have to look at here in Lawrence County to tap into those businesses that could be located in California or, or wherever, but you live in Lawrence County where the cost of living is low. I mean, those are, I mean, it's something we need to look at as well to tap into that. So I said, you look at the positive, you look at the negative of that. So. Uh, but I do thank you for uh, inviting me to come today, say a few words, and I'll participate in your, uh, your ceremony.